No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Awesome in fire Sweet perfume Your some presence Fills this place for me This is holy Time, time, consuming fire. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Let's see the first. 
first verse. It's a new day coming. It's time to sing that song again. I'm deep in love with you, Father, Father. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. My heart it beats for you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Come on. I'm deep in love. My heart beats for you. No other power. 
praise. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. Yes, you are worthy of my praise. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. Yes, you are worthy of my praise. So, oh, 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 oh. sing it. Yeah.
somebody thank God for this evening? Uh, 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 uh. Not like that. Deeper. 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 Come on, thank God for this evening. Thank Him that He has given you life. Thank Him that He has given you strength. Thank Him that He has given you hope. Thank Him that He's working in your life, both to will and to do, according to His good pleasure. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, celebrate God. I believe God for a miracle tonight. I believe for a transformation tonight. I believe for a breakthrough tonight. I believe for an answer tonight. Somebody shout, Lord! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, choir. You may take your seats. Greet five people and tell them thank you for coming in spite of the rain. Hallelujah. We thank God that you have made it anyway. Praise the Lord. Here in Fanero, whether it rains or it doesn't, as long as the wires can connect. We pray. There's only one time we're not able because the wires could not connect. But if the wires can connect and I can have lights and camera, we have to pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Margaret Price. Yes. We are excited about that women's conference. Personally, I cannot wait. Personally, I cannot wait. Personally, I cannot wait. Praise the Lord. So you know what to do. Five women. Some of you have faith for ten. Knock yourselves out. Praise God. They've announced we're just looking for volunteers. Those of you who say, you know, I want to serve that day. The window is open only shortly. Because women are registering faster to make sure that they do some that day. Of course, prayer is important. We're people of prayer. We have to prepare ourselves spiritually. And so we expect you also, some of you, to join me in, in the period of prayer for the preparation of the women's conference. Of course, there's the group that just claps because they expect it. But then there's a group also that takes the responsibility of praying with us as well. So I, those of you who are doing that, you're doing a good job. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to give... Father, we thank you for the most generous people in the world, the richest church there is. We thank you for their giving. Increase, multiply everything that they touch. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed in all saints. Said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you excited for today? Tonight is a hard one, but you're going to have to swallow it like a pillow that you need. A, 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 a what? A tablet like you need that you need to heal you. Uh -huh. You need to swallow it like a tablet that needs to heal you. Praise the Lord. It, but it's a good one. Praise the Lord. It's a good one. It's a good one. One day in my personal meditations, the Lord began to, see, to speak to me about this notion called self-image. Self-image. And I know many of you know or have heard in many forums the word discussed. In institutions, it's a big thing that if you're going to get a certain job, there's a certain image that you're supposed to carry. You see, how do you look at yourself? How do you see yourself? What is self-image? The mental picture of yourself. What is the mental picture that you have of yourself? And every other day, the world becomes more and more fascinated about how we look individually. For every part that I know, whether it's a movie or otherwise, they're always saying, how does this person look? What's the image of this individual? When you walk into the banking hall, it's important how you look sometimes. In every aspect, men without judge, you know, from how we appear. Is it a wrong thing to appear right? Is it a wrong thing 
to appear as you are expected? No. But deeper than that, the consequence of that sometimes extends into very, very deeper confusions in defining our own identities in God. Why do you think that the cosmetic industry in the world is growing bigger every day because of how people are supposed to look like. Recently, I was reading the global beauty industry is now worth about $536 billion. Go and Google how much we, we spend as a nation to run Uganda. You understand just how much that money is. It is predicted that by 2025, it should be about $716 billion. They say it's the one industry that was not affected by COVID. Can you believe it? <laughs> that even when people were under lockdown, <laughs> makeup was selling. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. And this whole notion is multi-dimensional. First dimension, of course, is how do you see yourself? Fundamental question. How do you see yourself? Then there's another dimension of how others see you. And then there's another dimension, dimension sorry, of how you perceive others see you. Who understands what, what that means? How do you see yourself? How do others see you? How do you perceive people see you? Because some people have a different perception of how they think people see them from how really people look at them. Who understands what I'm saying? And then there's a fourth one, which is deeper. How you, you perceive you see yourself. Uh, how you perceive you see yourself. How you think you see yourself. How you think people see you. How you see yourself. How other people see you. So the last two are perception. There's a difference between how you see yourself and how people see you. Do you agree? And there's sometimes there's a place where you think people see you a certain way, yet actually they see you a certain way. But also there are instances where you could think or perceive yourself to see yourself a certain way. It's English grammar. You understand what I'm saying? And there's a core there in all of these dimensions. Because the eye that designs all of this is the eye of a man. In a fallen nature. With a fallen perspective. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many people in the world go in front of a mirror and they feel like they are fat? And then they come and say, oh my God, I've gained so much weight, I'm fat. And they're small like a grasshopper. Have you seen it? And then you find a very heavy guy saying, oh my goodness, I've lost weight, I'm small. <laughs> Perception. Perception. Some feel they are taller. Yet they are short. Some feel they are short. Yet they are tall. Some feel they are beautiful. Yet they are beautiful. Some feel they are beautiful. Yet they are beautiful. That's not a mistake. I've intended to use beauty because I thought one of them is in quotes. You understand what I'm saying? Those of us who went to school, you remember those? Eh, there were those ones who always thought that they were, yeah. Even the way they walk. 
Okay. But then you had your, your word. Perception. You'd say, hmm, okay. And some of you were blunt enough to express your convictions about those individuals. And then there were those ones who did not look any of the part that, they, that you, you seemed to pick there was something wrong with them, but you could not connect to it because it wasn't faith either. It was some other thing. <laughs> you understand? Somebody tells you, oh, I've never felt this smart. And then you look at them and you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> huh? And then you find another person who doesn't feel smart at all. And you tell them, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You're smart. No, this is Bel Belgian. This, 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 this is not supposed to be here. It's in your head. You're okay. No. Are you following what I'm saying? And billions of dollars across the world are spent trying to change noses, trying to change eyes, expanding lips, pulling them back, expanding cheeks, remember, expanding. <laughs> hey! Perception, self image. You understand? Because somebody thinks if they add more curves, the revelation draws deeper. <laughs> Some time ago, I was trying, watching a video of a young man who had a, they, I think they call it a height adjustment operation, where they cut your bone and then they put it back and then they start pulling them by metals every day so a guy could add maybe three or two inches on his height and it's enough. And then I saw this uh, documentary and after the guy had felt a bit tall, I think he grew by about three inches. And then at the end, they put a video of this guy and he's testifying from the day I grew taller. I have been so confident about myself. My friends used to laugh at me, but now I feel, you know, so the guy starts to express the joy and confidence he has found because he has added another one, three inches. And as a world becomes more and more confusing more and more operations are appearing some are even dying in these operations breast implants not for med medical purposes and because somebody feels that if this expands a little bit mr x will what will respond and the Spirit of the Lord started to minister to me the depth of the pain that the Father has for his children because they do not know who they are and how they were met and what it took to make them. It's a very painful experience for the father. It's a feeling I had the opportunity to see by vision. You see, when the Bible says that he has made of all nations one blood, the Bible says that it's to the end that he determines the appointed times and the boundaries of, habita of their habitation that they should seek the Lord and if happily they might feel after him and find him, there they be no far. I've said this before, that it's important to the Father that as you seek his face, you understand how he feels about certain things. When you go in a shop, To get a tattoo, ask God, Father, what do you feel about this? When you make the next decision of the kind of hairstyle you're going to make, ask your Father, Father, what do you feel about this? Because there's a sort of godly feeling 
if you want to understand the mysteries of the inner life. The problem with many of us, we live so without. I know, yeah, yeah, we say, yeah, yeah, without doesn't matter as long as I have Jesus inside me. And that's true to a certain extent. To a certain extent. But also it's important for you to understand that your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can you find it anywhere in the Bible that it is seen to smoke? I've not seen it. But there's a reason why you shouldn't smoke. Because you're not of your own. You were bought. And because this is a temple of the Holy Spirit, there are things you will find that you will not do because they are not right for you to do. As of whether you get diseased or not, that's another thing. Even if you don't, because you might know how to keep your faith, yourself by faith. But the point is, this is a temple of the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, the Bible says, he's talking to Peter, he says, when you were younger, you went wherever you wanted. There are liberties expressed in our levels of maturity. In our immaturity, there are liberties as well that come. If my child walks around naked, that's a liberty that comes with her age. You see? And she's not at fault. I'll explain that a bit later. But when they mature and become human beings, they understand that this is not how I'm supposed to walk amidst people. You're following what I'm saying? It's the same thing. But now, the Spirit said to show me how distorted the images of ourselves are. And then we let voices without, opinions without, to affect how we should appear before men. And in this I say again to emphasize emphatically that that should not mean that because I've said this therefore look the way you want because you're created in the image of God. You know there's somebody getting you wrong here. I suspect. Some, somebody might hear this and say ah ah they said you don't need to do anything. You understand? And then you start looking funny. No, that's not what I'm saying. I mean to say exercise wisdom and submit this too to God. But deeper than that, get a, de a clearer vision of who you are spiritually and live from that vision without. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you go back to the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2, when they eat the forbidden fruit, no, no, before we go to the forbidden fruit, if you go to the verses 25, when God created man and woman in the garden, you remember the story? Verses 25 says something very fundamental here. He says, they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Why were they naked but not ashamed? Because there was a, they were not awakened in their consciousness of the image that they bow without. They had eyes like you do. But there was a certain perception hidden from them because of the glory that man had on him. And it clothed him. And in clothing him, it I mean that the naked eye would not see, but the vision of the naked eye was aligned to purity. As why children before they are awakened to a certain consciousness, like I explained, they can walk about naked and not care. Because that part of them is not yet awakened. Are you following what I'm saying? So the Bible says they were naked and unashamed. Both man and woman. There was no consequence to their nakedness. And then they eat the forbidden fruit. They fall in the third chapter, the seventh verse, the Bible says, when they ate the fruit, the eyes of both were what? Were opened. What was the first thing that comes to their vision? 
and they both knew that they were naked. They both knew that they were naked. It's the first knowledge that comes to them. Remember? You shall eat of every tree in the garden, but not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are you following? So the scriptures tell us the moment they fall from glory, the shame shifts from the nakedness of purity to the shame of nakedness because the nature had fallen. And the Bible tells us they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves what? Aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amidst or among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? As thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee not to eat. Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were naked? You must have eaten something you were not supposed to eat. Before that, you carried no consciousness that you were naked. Therefore, you were unashamed. Now shame has come because you have been awakened to the consciousness your vision has been corrupted. Now you see the way you should not see. And from then on, we live with a fallen nature. Now, if some of us have read the story of Noah, you remember Noah? The Bible boasts of a man who found grace before God. He walked with the Lord in the days when evil was on the earth like never had been in human history. And you remember Satan had fallen with a third of the angels? You remember that story? And then you remember the story of how the sons of God which were angels came and copulated with the daughters of men and had giants in the earth. There were fallen angelics moving on the face of the earth. And wickedness was burst through these fallen angelics. And the, the giants into the sons of men. And one day, I started to look for extra biblical literature to explain that period. Many books that are written, Jasher, I've told about. Enoch have told about quite a number of them that explain deeper, they give us deeper information about what really happened. And if any of you has read the book of Enoch, a story is given deeper there than in some of the angelics. In fact, later on, they are spoken of in the New Testament of how they are held in what? In chains. You remember those angels that are spoken of of how they are uh, arrested forever in chains? I think somewhere in Peter. He spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness. Who were these angels? When you read the book of Enoch, it tells you the names and what they did. And some of you know, I have mentioned something called forbidden wisdom. Why were they arrested? Because they taught the sons of men forbidden wisdoms. Wisdoms that we were not supposed to know. Part of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree that is eaten. Now that man is open to any spirit, to minister to him, he can and will yield to anything because he has the vision to receive it because the nature is polluted already. Are you following? And when you read, the book of Enoch even gives the names of his angels. Semjaza, he taught the sons of men enchantments. Barakijal taught astrology. Cockabell taught constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arachiel, the signs of the earth. 
So you remember when he tells the children of Israel that you look at the, the sky and know that it is red and it's a good day and then you look at the sky and know that it is so and it's a bad day. You know how to read the signs of the sky but you know not the signs of the times. You remember? He's saying that that teaching came from the sons of men and came even in the church then. The Pharisees took it. The Sadducees took it in their synagogues. They started teaching about fallen angelic wisdoms. But among them is an angel called Azazel. Azazel taught men to make swords. He taught men to make knives and shields. And now this is hard. The fabrication of mirrors. He taught the sons of men to make mirrors. Mirrors. I'm coming. Ornaments. The use of antimony. Some bracelets. Not all, some. The beautifying of eyelids. And all coloring tinctures. Coloring. Tinctures. Coloring tinctures. And, and when you read that portion, the next line says, and there arose much godlessness and fornication. Much godlessness and fornication. It came back to me. If you ask anybody, what image would come in your head when you think of a prostitute standing on the street waiting for a man? How would their face look like? Answer me, how, how would their face look like? Why would it look like that way? Why of all forms would she need to carry a certain color? Different colors. Why? Is there a coincidence? Oh, God is speaking something. Why is it that the same angel who taught how to make weaponry, the wisdom to make weapons, is the same angel teaching men how to fabricate mirrors? What is it about mirrors? What is it about mirrors? Why was it important for a fallen angel to teach a man how to make a mirror? That thing you look yourself through. Why was it important? Because it further gave you a mental picture of your image. It further enhanced the vision of who you are physically. And it was important, or it is very important for the devil, for you to constantly see yourself that way. It's very important for the devil, for you to constantly see yourself that way because the mirror that appears to you constantly you all of a sudden will tune your consciousness to believe that that's who you are because this is the vision that is constantly in front of you every time you look in a mirror every time you look in a camera the pictures you've taken twa, 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 you are always awakened to that image and you think you're always convinced let me say it that way, that that's who you are. But again, I ask, why the fellow teaching men how to make weapons is the same guy teaching men how to beautify eyelids? Because all of this is weaponry. Because all of it is weaponry.
God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Why is it that when he made man in his own image and likeness, he made sure that they were naked and unashamed? Why would he kill a certain vision or consciousness of a certain image on them? Because that was the wrong image for a man to behold. God wouldn't be dumb to fearfully make you and still hide a vision, a certain vision or perception of yourself. He wouldn't be dumb. He knew what you were not supposed to see and what you were supposed to see. And the fallen angelic say, the sons of men must see this. They must see this. Because if they don't see this, they will not invest in improving this and that and that and that. And every other day, they are disrupting God's image. Every other day, they are changing who they are. Every day. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you come back to church? <laughs> There's someone look at me and say, why did you bring me here? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Somebody's getting free tonight. I said somebody's getting free tonight. Unless you are dealing with a medical condition, because I know people who deal with medical conditions, and they go to doctors, and the skin, their color might, must, might change because they're dealing with a medical issue. That I understand. By the way, that's understandable. So don't go judging because you don't know people's what? Stories. Don't go judging. Somebody's dealing probably with a medical issue. Are you following what I'm saying? Because I've seen it. I'm a pastor. I've prayed with people. But I'm talking about that African who doesn't feel comfortable in an African body? Everything about you is beautiful. Everything. God made you. He knows who you are. That is why I want my fellow, my, my, my fellow, especially believers, believers. Maybe let me even go a bit deeper. Ladies, born again women of God. You remember when Peter is preaching about what it takes to become a wife? You remember when Peter is teaching it? Peter teaches and says that when you wives, if you begin from verses 2, uh-huh. No, verses 1, I think. Likewise, wives... First Peter chapter 3, be in subjection to your own husbands. Now he's teaching women how to be wives. Because some of you are asking for husbands, but you're not yet wives. Follow me. He said, if any of your husbands obey not the word, let they, that, let, uh, sorry, they also should be or may be without the word be won by the conversations of their wives. That means there's a conversation God has given you without words. And he continues the next verse says, while these men behold your chaste conversation, your disciplined conversation, coupled with fear, whose adorning, listen, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. So the, Peter is not against good hair. Please note this. Peter is not against your earrings. No. Peter is saying that that's not what beautifies you. That's not what a man is looking for. And if you think that that's what men look for, then you're thinking like the other women I was talking about. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's not what men are looking for. No. That's not that. Listen. Ask any man. That's not what we're looking for. If a man falls in love with you because you changed your nose, he's buying. Trust me, that's not love. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's not what men are looking for. I repeat that. Peter is talking to you. He's saying you should not, don't look only on the outward. I'm not saying don't be smart, but he's saying that's not what makes it. And I also want to 
charge some of you who think now from today it means eh? I'm just going to carry any hair you do you be in trouble <laughs> No. It's good to look beautiful, but put wisdom in this. If an angel told certain people to make certain kinds of bracelets, bracelets, I don't know what they look like. I can't say that every bracelet is demonic. But then that should mean that a woman should use wisdom even when you're buying something you're going to wear on your hand, on your wrist. Because the Bible says, the world became more godless because of that and fornication came in. It's amazing the little things the devil can use. Okay, back to what he's saying, Peter. He's saying, verses 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not what? corruptible that gentle and mixed spirit which in the eyes of God is priceless or of great price now you understand why we call it my great price yes that's where it came from next verse for after this listen the after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands now he this this has become a raiment because they adorned themselves they dressed themselves that way so there's a way you can beautify yourself without, but there's also a way you can beautify yourself from within. And Peter is saying, men are looking from that thing from within, not without. If a man is only looking outward, then he's seeing a certain other thing, not a wife. Somebody shout hallelujah. So now we're living in a generation that is distorted. Why? Because we have mirrors. Am I saying from today never look through mirrors? No, I'm only trying to tell you that the wisdom of a mirror was fallen and came from fallen angelics. It was never intended for a man to see themselves that way. As hard as it is, I promised I'll preach it. Unfortunately, it fell on Thursday. Sundays are usually people are more flexible, but it's harder on Thursdays. And you understand? Because Thursday sermons are usually different from Sunday. You understand? Are you following what I'm saying? When you read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, now they're teaching us the mystery of regeneration. When you become a new creation in Christ, Paul is trying to help you understand, verse 17, he says that the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Now let me explain this liberty. Liberty is a vision that only clearly and in truth can be seen through the kingdom of glass. This kingdom you came into is a kingdom of mirrors also. You remember when he talks about a man who reads the word? And not being a forgetful hearer. And then he gives the allegory of a man who beholds himself in a glass. He sees himself like in a mirror. And the Bible says, and the moment he turns, he forgets how he looked like. You remember that? And the Bible says, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was verses 25 for but whosoever listen looks into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in all his deeds he has talked about the man who looks into the perfect law because into that perfect law what what what, what does he look into through it's that mirror it's that glass he sees within that mirror and looks into the perfect law of liberty. One version calls it the law that sets men free. In other words, you can never understand the highest dimension of liberty without the right mirror. Without the right mirror. 
And Satan would not have created a mirror for men to see their physical self if he was not cognizant of the spiritual mirror with which God has drawn to define you. This is deep. Because we cannot separate the liberty that God has given us from the mirror through which we have to see it. You need something. You need to see it through something. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You need to see it through something. When we talk about liberty, you will never understand it until you get the right vision of the liberty that you have in God. Somebody speak in tongues and get it. Just take a few seconds and speak in tongues and get this. Because God tells me somebody needs to get this. Just speak in tongues for just a few seconds. Somebody needs to get this. I'm still speaking, but the Spirit has propelled me to provoke somebody to just speak in tongues for just a few minutes so you don't lose this. But the vision of your liberty can only th come through the mirror you look into. Otherwise, your definition of liberty is lost. Somebody speak in other tongues. Sorry, I had to interrupt this. But the Spirit desires it. Don't worry, I'll finish later. But the Spirit desires this. Somebody speak in other tongues. If you don't have tongues, say something. Say, God, help me grasp this. Help me grasp this. Say, God, help me grasp this. For the Bible says, For who saw the sun says free is free indeed but it's important to have the right vision of yourself because without the right vision of who you are you can never be truly free thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, let me say this before I close. So in 2 Corinthians, it says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. That law is expressed. And then it says in the next line, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of God. He says, We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. We're changed from the same, from, 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 sorry, we're changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We're changed. We're changed. We're metamorphosed. Eh? The word there is metamorphosis. You come from one stage of maturity to another stage of maturity to another stage of maturity until you get to the very image with which God has created. Remember, he says, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. What you see before that mirror, what you see before that mirror is a fallen nature. You need to see through the glass of the spirit, through the mirror of the spirit, and you get a very clear definition of who you really are. And God says, the moment your eyes can get this, then you're free. Without this, you can never be really free. You'll seek things without and unsacred vocabularies will define your image. You'll not understand when the language of God is communicating to you because it, it comes to a man who has truly understood who they really are. As they always say, your masters usually appear most when you're ready. And sometimes your place of readiness is having the right vision. When he tells you do not cast pearl to swine, what does that mean? They'll trample on them. And after that, they'll rent you. So it's important for the right revelation to come to the right person. God does not speak to you beyond what you're ready for. 
He does not minister to you beyond what you're ready for. And the instruction of preparation is different from the instruction that comes in the preparation. When you're prepared, when you're ready. Now that's mastery. That's the conversation of mastery. That's the conversation of mastery. To instruct you to be ready is different from the instruction that comes because you are ready. This secondary one is mandate. It is assignment. It's what separates the called from the chosen. So many are called, the Bible says, but few are chosen. But you must see through this law of liberty, the law that sets men free, the law of free men. One version calls it the law of free men. What, what freedom are we talking about? What freedom are we talking about? Every aspect, every dimension of your life. Talk about health. Why do you think that when a disease walks to you, it beholds the image of a fallen man and it can come in your body and kill you? Because that's the image it beholds. Do you understand? But when you behold the right image of who you are, through that glass, the Bible says you're metamorphosed, you are changed from one stage and level of glory to another stage and level of glory where you get to and, 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 and disease comes to you and when it looks at you, you don't look like a fallen man. It does not look at your image like the image of a man with only blood group O, B, C, O, D. It sees another blood flowing through your veins. It looks at another light coming out of your continents. It looks at another distinctive mark that preserves and protects you and it will say, this one, do not touch. Because this doesn't look like a man. I say this does not look like a man. Because the more you see yourself as a man, the more everything sees you as a man. The more the things that attack men come to you. What don't you get? What don't you get? What don't you get? The inefficiencies of a fallen, the inefficiencies of a fallen nature. The image, that distorted image of anything fallen looks so bad on you, especially when you have understood the mystery of the new birth. That's why it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, the old is past and now the new and all things are become new. He says, and all things are of God, which has reconciled us to himself. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation to continue telling men that after the reconciliation of the new birth, everything on you becomes of God. You retain, oh sorry, you regain the image that Adam and Eve lost in the garden. You stop looking at yourself based on what you see in that mirror. Or rather what men see of you stops to define you. Something deeper starts to define you. Something deeper influences how you talk. Something deeper influences how you walk. Something deeper influences how you function. Without that, you don't have a presence. Without that, you don't have a presence. Without that, there is no power around your dwelling. Without that, there are certain things you will never attract. You'll pursue the things that should pursue you. Without that, you'll never command certain favors in the spirit. Without that, you will never guide men. You cannot lead without that. You can't. Without that, certain doors cannot open to you. Without that, certain gatekeepers cannot respond to you. And the word became flesh. And we beheld his only glory as the only true son of God, full of grace and truth. And then John says, beloved, now we know that we are sons of God, but it does not yet appear yet what we shall become. But the Bible says, but when he appears, when he appears, the Bible says, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So when we get the right vision of the Christ, in the appearance and vision of God, we become or we are, no, we come to the realization that we are like him. And when we stand like him, Everything that devil saw on the Christ, he starts to see on you.
the devil will see you and say, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. Cancer will look at you and say, this is Jesus. HIV will look at you and say, this is Jesus. Arthritis will look at you and say, this is Jesus. Hypertension will look at you and say, this is Jesus. Diabetes will look at you and say, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. So that portion of scripture in John, many only change, or many only look at it from what shall happen at the end. When he finally appears. But they forget that to us, many of us, he has appeared. And at that appearance, something changed on our lives. That's what I mean when I say, I saw the Lord. It means no man ever encountered God and stayed the same. When Abraham met God, his life changed. When Moses met God, his life changed. When Noah encountered God, his life changed. When Ezekiel, Isaiah encountered God, his life changed. Paul on his way to Damascus to persecute the church, when he encountered God, his life changed. Everybody you read in scripture, there was a metamorphosis that took place. And much more now he says of the new birth, what they experienced in the Old Testament has no bearing of consideration or comparison to what we experience. For this is love made perfect, that as it is, so are we in this world. Self-image, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Why do people look at you like a normal human being? Why do the things of this world respond to you like a normal human being? Why are you subject to the elements of this world like other human beings are? Because every morning you have been waking up to a mirror. I was reading the psychology of children and they say that it, it takes children close to three years to truly understand that the person in a mirror is them. That bearing in their minds grows slowly. The first time they saw that mirror, they did not know that it was them. That means you're not even your mind. You're not your body, neither you, your mind. Your mind is evolving, it is growing. But there's some that you are. Who are you? That's the image you have to get a hold of in your spirit. Harness it. Grow it. Stir it. Provide for it. Feed it. Just feed that image. When you do, no man will ever define you from without. That's the fullness of liberty. I realize that we can never be free when the visions of men and anything that is in the world of men views us as men. We can never be free. Our true place of liberty is when you walk to a tree and it can tell that you are a son of God. You enter a nation and it can tell that this is a woman of God. You can enter a school and it can tell this is another person. Human beings have been passing until this one entered. The Bible says in him you live, move and have your own being. Some of you think mirrors are small things. They are big. Now he has said. And all of us with open face. That's why we preach grace. Because every time you preach the law, the Bible says the veil comes on their faces. Why? Because it points to human weakness. 
You see why we preach grace? Some people don't understand why we are grace preachers. The Bible says every time Moses is read, 2 Corinthians 3.15, the veil is upon their heart. Something covers them. And all they see is what they see in the mirror. But the Bible says, but we with open face, as we behold like in the glass the glory of God. That means God, for, oh, 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 for God to change you, he has to put a certain mirror before you. Without that mirror, you cannot change. I said, without that mirror, you cannot change. Without that glass, you cannot change. You cannot be truly transformed. That is why you see Christians who pray, but they don't have results. Because their prayers, their supplications do not come with a true vision. They don't look into this glass. I told you the kingdom of God is a kingdom of glass. Satan had to create his own. They're conscious that they're naked. They're looking at everyone. Let me give them an opportunity to see themselves. self-image but what about the image of God what about the image of God so Paul says with open face if we can continue looking into this thing if we can continue reading the word read the amplified version of the same uh, the same scripture he says and all of us as with unveiled face because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. He says we are constantly being transfigured into this, his very own image in ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's tr true liberty is beholding the glory of God fully. Because the moment a man can catch the right vision of the glory of God of who he is, then that man becomes that glory. Because remember, this mirror is not a transparent one. No. It gives us the image of what we see. But that is not your physical self now you're looking at. That is the spirit one God created in Genesis. Let us create man in our own image and likeness. Now that is glory. That's what Adam lost. And a mosquito would get into his body and kill him. No wonder all diseases are diagonized on the surface. Because that's all they can see. Blood. The signs, the symptoms, they're all here. Blood speaks. The x-rays, x-ray, x-ray, sorry. I always told you, that's the surfaces. Because that's the, that's the only vision man can see to diagonize. If you understand this from your health, your finances, your relationship, your ministry, everything will change. You will be amazed at the things you have been chasing, yet they were supposed to pursue you. Surely goodness and mercy shall what? Shall follow me. These signs shall follow. Why? Why are they following? Because they, they have the vision of who they're following. He tells them when you receive the word, I thank God that you did not receive it as a word of mere men. God was speaking to God's you understand what I'm saying? We are children of God. So he says, behold, what manner of love from the Father that we should be called sons. That's just enough. Everything you're trying to beautify outside maybe it's because you have not yet understood who you are within and that you can actually beautify from within to without. God has not made anybody ugly. <laughs> has he not said that it's only the appointed times that define beauty? The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in their own time. Fourth dimensional. 
It's time. It's only time. Time. Not physical time. Chronos. The timings of the spirit. There is nothing God can't beautify. There is nothing God cannot tame into influence. Nothing. Maybe they denied you that job because of how you look spiritually. Maybe you failed to settle in marriage because of how you look spiritually. Maybe your businesses have failed to move because of the perception you have of yourself or how you are really perceived spiritually. Maybe things are not working in your ministry as a pastor because of the image you behold of yourself. Do you know what it means to be fearfully and wonderfully mad? Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Shout glory to God. I know that this is a very hard one for many people to understand now. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot needs to change when it comes to your vision. And as a young man studying ministry, I had a very wonderful vision. I should have been almost leaving university. It's a vision I've never really fully shared. Never fully shared. But I understood that day why the Bible says we regard no man in the flesh. Because nothing can ever define a man by what you're looking at. Nothing, nothing, nothing defines you on what we see now. Nothing. In fact, spiritually, you're... In, Spiritually, if your reality is spiritual, if the true real you, huh, if the deepest dimension of your reality is a spirit form of you, then what you carry is the shadow. It's a shadow. You can only understand that depending on the light from which you see this shadow. Because many of you, when I talk about shadow, you look at natural light, your body, your physical body, and what it casts. Then you say, this is a vision. This, this is a what? You see what I'm saying? You look at the sun, it hits your body, you leave a shadow. You say, ah, this is my shadow. But all of that is natural light. All of that is natural light. Have you thought about the light of God? That which he created in Genesis and he said, let there be light. That one under which he created all things because without it, he could not create anything in the physical realm. The lights you're talking about were created in 14. Genesis 1, 14. When he had already created that greater light, then he created the lesser ones in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons and for days and for years. He created the sun, the moon and the stars, the constellations. Those, those are natural lights. Now, if you see a shadow from a natural light, it does not presuppose that that's the very shadow. Oh, okay. So when you read Psalms, though I walk through the shadow, through the valley of the shadow of death, you can only define that shadow from the light cast on the image of that thing. There is a dimension where your physical body becomes a shadow. And like all shadows, they can do nothing. They touch nothing and they are of no consequence. Who are you? Who are you? I had this vision and I understood it so clearly. I stopped reading the Bible to get an answer of a healing. I stopped reading the Bible to get an answer for financial breakthrough. I stopped reading the Bible because a friend told me to read. I started reading the word with that vision. 
from that light. And as I'm very amazed at the things that I saw. And every time you see them, God tells you the problem is not your sickness. The problem is your metamorphosis. How much have you evolved spiritually? Because the higher you go, the, the more you mature in the things of the spirit, the more you're kept from the elements of the earth. The more influence you have in the earth, the more power you have in the earth, the more glory you have in the earth. I might not have the language fully to express what I saw, but this is what I know, that I'm trying to give somebody another vision tonight. If you walk back with this thing and understand it, then you'll understand true liberty. You're not free because you're married. You're not free because you drive a nice car. You're not free because you have a wonderful career or great children. You're, that's not freedom. Free, true freedom, true liberty is when you have a perfect vision of God. Because it's almost as though from that experience of that vision, it is not even your responsibility to change. It's the power of that vision to transform you, to metamorphose you. And when that vision starts to change you, there's a way you appear to demons. There's a way you appear to the principalities of this world. There's a way you appear to the powers, the spirits of wickedness. There's a way you appear to the devil. There's a way you appear to the sons of men. Without that, you can never truly live a God life. Get to your feet. How can a man pray with such a someone? Tell me. How, how can a man pray after such a sermon? What are you to pray for? What are you to pray for? Open your mouth and start to speak to God. Come on, pray. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And the things of the earth will grow friendly deep in the light of his glory and grace. Would you turn, would you turn? Come on, pray. Give me the true vision. 
What you see in the mirror is not who you are. It's a shadow of your true self. The substances of God. The substances of God. The glory of God. Is a true image of you. You are the glory of God. 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 
of God. You are the glory 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 of God. You will never fail. 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 Refuse to die. Refuse to die early. Mako Paradigabara. So Takarima. Marepe de Gosilapa. Make Parila Gota. Riposira Rabako. Sika Parila Gote. Mako Parila Gatolopo. Your ministry will progress. Hira Bakotela. The anointing of God upon your life will change things. Will transform generations. Will move the impossible. Signs. Miracles and wonders are yours. Mako Babara de Lebo Sedelego. The Bible says a thousand will fall at one side and ten thousand on the other. But none of those things shall by any means come near you. Why? Because the glory of God they will see. Maroko Sabarare, Soko Bore Tekelepa, Soko Ribalika, Riboro de Gosirabale, Roko Payaba. Only expected as shall you be inaccessible to, re- to see the reward of the wicked. Maroni Bakatelepa, Shibarare. The pestilences of the night will not touch you. Rekabari da gosa, remaroni goshika, ribari gadori bagarate. The plagues that kill the men of this world will not kill you. Masopori kabara lego, prani gosha bakota pa, moko shiraba, rikabalado. The destruction that wasted at noonday will be far from your dwelling. Maroko badago, shirara bagarade, sopara rakota. The provisions of heaven will come to you. Mareko Madigosa, Rerado Gosina Para, the wisdom of God is on your life. Masori Pabaya, Sokori Mateke, Esira Raba. You shall reign as kings in this world. You shall reign as queens. You shall reign as queens in this world. Mako Pabara, Sopara Neko, Sarara Neko Sika, Mare Rebo Diga Sopa, Somara Rako Sararaba. Rima kola bare, rena gosila pa, rika baye botila, rika badi koshata, nazo zika barada, ora baba koshata la pa. We'll go strangely deep, shara ra ra ba, zoro robo gosika tarapa, roko sakata. Zoro robo si karaba, zori baba bagosa, e sarara raba, zoro bogosa, masoko raba ba, sarara bara na debo, zoro bogosi karaba, reke bara debo sala bara na, ke ya baba baba kosa, e ya bori da bagosi lepa, moli bara debo sa. The world is about to see another version of you. The world is about to see. Oh, ya bara de go sira bako, sira riko raba de go sele, masori kato de bara de, masori karo di ga soba, soti la paya, evolve, evolve. Mature, grow into this wisdom. May the liberty of God become a clear vision in your life. Things will happen so easy, so effortlessly, so quick. When you walk to doors, they will open. When you walk before gates, they will open. And the things of the earth will grow strangely deep. In the light of His glory and praise. Raise your hands, I want to pray over you. Like the scripture says, when He appears, we shall be like Him. May God give you a very distinctive vision of who he is today. 
I know you came for a normal service as you have come every Thursday. But I see the Spirit of God thrust somebody in a very deep dimension of vision today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. God is launching somebody into a realm that has no words. The human language has no power to put into words some of the dimensions of the Spirit that only God can give. And I see God is launching somebody into a very deep place your vision is changing from today. You're going to see things many men cannot see. You're going to hear things many men cannot hear. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the anointing that makes us peculiar. It's the anointing that makes us different. It's the anointing of special graces. Receive it. 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 Now you see. Now you understand. Some of you do not have a clue about how much changed your life has been this evening. But I feel in my spirit that something just changed on somebody. You're going to live differently. Differently from many believers that you know. I told you this anointing brings special graces. It brings unusual potentials. It comes with a certain power. It comes with a certain authority. It comes with a certain influence. It comes with a certain wisdom. Tonight, your consciousness has been aligned. The true light of the glorious gospel is shining through your spirit to destroy every distorted image that you had of yourself. No wonder you've been sickly. No wonder you've been struggling. Because even those things beheld you the same way. But tonight it changes. This weapon will never be forged to your destruction again. You will never be deceived by what men see without. Like I said, the angel who made these mirrors, made the other weapons too and it's a very strong weapon the devil has used to convince us that whatever is known of our physical selves is who we are no you are in this world but you're not of this world neither can the mirrors of this world define your true identity that's only your passport photo not the identity that you carry in God And whatever God has created in you is going to come out. Healing is yours. Divine health is yours. Freedom is yours from all manner of bondage and addiction and perversion. 
This is yours. Healing is yours of all manner of disease. Bible says if you by the spirit mortify the transactions of the devil in the flesh you shall live. You will live truly. Give the Lord a mighty of praise. Come on. Clap for Jesus. 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 The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, shall make you free. So before we finish this service, if you're here and you say, today I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That's the best decision to make because it means tonight you take back the image that the fallen Adam lost. Come right now and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Come. Come. Those of you who are moving, pause a bit so we get people saved before you move. Because somebody might move because they see you moving. And you might stumble somebody into hell. Stay where you are and wait for these people to come and receive Christ. Then you can leave. Ask your neighbor. This is the time for you to preach and ask them, are you born again? If they're not, ask them. Can I, leave? Can I escort you to the front? And then they'll come. Clap your hands to Jesus. Clap your hands to Jesus. Come. Come. Come wherever you are. Talk to your neighbor. Preach to them now. Come. Come quickly because of time. Oh, sunny day. Come quickly. Come quickly. Today is your day. Come quickly. Beatrice Waimba Kayimba Are they over? Are they over? Is there anybody coming? If they are, clap because I'm going to start. Is there anybody? Awesome. Is there anybody coming? Okay, there's one more coming. Some people are hard hearted. But you're coming in Jesus' name. Those of you who are here, you're going to repeat these words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. You have revealed to me why you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. 
and today I believe in your sacrifice, your death and resurrection for the forgiveness of my sins and a new life. Today I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. I see someone live stream as well. Those of you who have made these prayers, you're going to walk here for only two minutes. We want to know you, see, you know, take your phone number, pray for you, help you understand what it means to be born again. On Sunday, we are doing second service. The first service is 9 to 11, second service is 